morning. Uh, we'll start this session on uh, distal femoral fractures. Yeah, thank you. The distal femoral fractures we know can occur in a wide spectrum of severity. And each of these fractures can be really challenging to achieve stable fixation. Some of the problems encountered are that the small articular segment may make achieving stable fixation of that small segment difficult. You may have combination which may be articular, which may be metadiaphyseal or a combination of both. You may have significant soft tissue injury, especially if you have a high energy trauma. And in the elderly with a pre-existing arthritis or the presence of an indwelling total knee can make fixation difficult. The traditional plating didn't give good results because they were not strong enough to avoid the virus collapse resulting in non-union malunions. They were also open surgeries and the problems associated with it. It was only when angle stable implants were introduced and the, one of the first ones being the condylar blade plate that we saw better results with fixation of the fractures. This was helped by improved surgical techniques where soft tissue dissection was minimized by indirect reduction techniques and less invasive procedures. And so much so that now, as of today, the lateral locking plate has become the standard treatment for a majority of the distal femoral fractures. With the improved biomechanical strength, it can resist virus collapse. More important, it gives you a lot more fixation options in the distal fragment and showed promising early results. But as with many implants, on a longer follow-ups, we start getting problems. The major problem of the lateral plate is if you don't get your fixation right and make it too rigid, then the healing is very slow. And if you have a fracture which has combination of the medial cortex, then that is going to put a lot more stress on your implant resulting in early failures. So in such cases, if you can supplement your lateral plating with an additional plate applied on the medial side, it will restore the medial cortical buttress. It allows you to get a better reduction of your fracture and hence it enhances stability, improving healing. So does that mean that every lateral distal femoral fracture should have two plates? I think you need to be selective in which cases to apply the plates. Not all of them will require. If you have somebody with a good quality bone with an adequate uh, distal fragment giving you adequate uh, fixation, then you may get away with a single plate. But these are certain, some of the indications where you may have to consider an additional medial plate. So if you have somebody who has extensive medial combination, where there is a functional loss of the medial cortical buttress, you need to add a medial plate to improve the stability and reduce your risk of failure. And certainly if the loss goes more than two centimeters, you should primarily graft and plate them. In fractures like a tro trans, low transcondylar fracture, where the distal fragment is very small and you don't get adequate hold in the distal fragment without running the risk of your screws going into the intercondylar notch, an additional plate will give you a lot better stability because you have a lot more fixation options. The same holds true for a periprosthetic fracture, where because of the presence of the implant, even with a variable angle plate, you may not achieve adequate fixation with a single plate. An additional medial plate will give you a better fixation. If you have severe combination, then again, an uh, additional plate will give better fixation. Sometimes you see in this elderly that the bone is of very poor quality, severe osteoporosis. And here, in spite of the fact that you may get a good medial uh, reduction with intact medial cortex, but the bone is so poor that the screw purchase may not be as good, leading to early failure. And in these, uh, additional plate medially will certainly help. If you have a medial hofa, and especially if it's a large medial fragment, you want to neutralize it, and hence an additional medial plate will be indicated in these fractures. And if you get a non-union after a failed lateral plating, and if you're going to do revise the fixation, it is always better to enhance the fixation with a medial plate. So it's a certain thing about the techniques, can, what approach do you use if you want to put two plates? You can always use a single anterior approach which will be either medial or lateral parapetella depending on the fracture pattern. 
you may opt to use a separate lateral and a separate medial incision to foot the two plates. Whichever approach you use, you need to make sure that you minimize your surgical footprint and retain the vascularity of the distal fragment. You can do a primary medial plating doing at the same time as you do your lateral plating. And this is certainly indicated in the uh, subset of fractures that we just saw. But if there's significant medial soft tissue injury, then you may want to delay your medial plating till this injury has healed. What kind of implants should you be using? Preferably dual locking plates. Unfortunately, you don't have a specific anatomic medial distal femoral plate, so you need to improvise. You may have to use a recon plate or a T buttress locking plate and mold it to fit the femur. Try and get at least two screws in both the fragments. The plate configuration can be either parallel or orthogonal depending on the fracture site, but the orthogonal will give you more plate uh, screw options in the distal fragment and may be biomechanically superior. So why two plates? Okay, adding, uh, adding a medial plate will improve your fixation because you've now restored the medial cort cortical column and this will allow you to mobilize early and better rehab. Also, when you open medially, you can get a better reduction of the fracture, correct any translation or angulation, and this will help you with a high union rate. But it is not without its own drawbacks. As we said, if you do too much soft tissue dissection, you may disturb the vascularity. You may need to make additional incisions. If you do an open surgery like shown here, you're probably going to get a lot of knee stiffness. And because we don't have anatomic plates, you may get a poor fit to the patient anatomy and these may cause soft tissue irritation later on for the patients. So in cases where a medial plate is indicated but you're not unable to get a fixation, you may use an intramalary nail or a, a fibular allograft when indicated. So in summary, a single lateral plate may have a higher failure rate in certain subset of distal femoral fractures. Adding a supplemental medial plate will give you bicolumnar stability, thus reducing the risk of implant failure and enhancing union, but it will come at a cost of increased disturbance of the vascularity. Thank you.